Hi, welcome back to the Getting to Know Linux series. Today we're going to be looking at authenticating to a remote host using SSH keys. And we're going to change the ENP3S0 interface to ETH0. Now, this is especially important for computer lab systems as each computer in the, I'm sorry, each system in the lab may have a different interface number. It might be EN0, some might be uh, ETH0, etc but we can make them all ETH0. So that's kind of a, a cool feature. Now we will be using, let me flip over here, we will be using the virtual machine that we created earlier in, uh, in this series. So if you don't have that Ubuntu machine, then you may wanna go ahead and, and get that thing installed so you can, you can run with it. Okay, so click over in VirtualBox here. I'm going to power on that Ubuntu machine. It should start up. I'll need the IP address. I'm going to try to log into it remotely. So once again, this is the Ubuntu 18.04 machine that we created in the earlier video. So uh, any machine will work. So if you've got another machine that you want to use. Okay, we've got this one started up. I'm going to go ahead and log into it as student and password. And I'm going to see what the IP address is. So I'm going to type I, uh, that ifconfig. It's actually telling me what the IP address is right there in the screen. But let's practice our commands, ifconfig. And so we can see that it is 192.168.1.120. If I wanted to search for that, I can do grep like this. And let's see if color works. And we'll do inet. And we'll see if we get any inet addresses that come back. Yeah, there you go. You got that 192.168.1.120. All right, I'm going to flip back over to my other interface there. And I'm going to try to log into it. So I'm going to type ssh. SSH student, that's the username that I want to log into the remote system that has to exist on the remote system, 192.168.1.120. It tells me, hey, I don't know who this system is. And my system does not know who that system is. It's a brand new box. So I'm going to say, yes, I do want to continue. Whoops. Yes, I do want to continue connecting. It's what's the password? Well, the password is password. There we go. Now I've logged into the system remotely. I've got some better colors now on the screen and understands that I can see colors in my terminal. And, and so it's working a little bit better there. And it's uh, just a little bit easier to see. Um, let me go over here. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and create some keys and share them over. Now the way we're going to do that is if you're on your host system. Now I know I'm on the virtual machine right here, but on your host system, you'll want to do ssh-keygen. Now when you type ssh-keygen, it's going to create a .ssh folder, so you home student .ssh, and that id underscore rsa. Now you're going to create two keys, one's going to be public and private. I'm not entering a passphrase at this point. If you do enter a passphrase, then you have to use both the key and a passphrase. So uh, I'm not entering a passphrase there, so now I've got a key. Now just to see what those keys look like, I'm gonna go into my SSH folder here and look at that, and I can see that I've got this RDS, um, R ID underscore RSA. It's my private key right here. So this is the one you don't share with anybody. Don't put it on a video in YouTube. <laughs> so don't share this with anybody. This is your private key. Now, right here, this idrsa.pub, this is your public key. Now, that public key is fine to share with everybody. So, all that they might do is they might give you access to log into their systems. So, there you go, right? It's a public key. So, let's go ahead and log out of this system. I'm going to exit from here. And I did create my keys over there. Now, my, my local host, if I wanted to do the same thing, I'd do it SSH keygen, but I already have. Um, keys on my computer and I uh, don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to do SSH keygen. I've already done it. Over here, let's go ahead and I want to do SSH copy ID. In this case, I'm going to choose my ID because I already have it dot SSH slash. And I'm going to use that ID underscore RSA and it knows to use the pub. So I'm going to use the public one. Now, once again, you would not copy your private key to a remote system. The private key only stays on your own system. The reason I ran ssh-keygen on the Ubuntu system 
was so that you could see what it looked like to run that command since I've already run it on my workstation. So ssh-copy-id, I for the ID I want to use, ID RSA pub, fantastic. The username at whatever system it's at, which one, six, eight, so you can get around my keyboard here, and enter. It's gonna say, hey, what's your password? Password is password. I type that, and it says, okay, number of keys added one. You wanna see if it works? Yeah, sure, let's see if it works. So it's saying you can type this command. Now you don't need the single quotes right there. You just type SSH student student at the IP address, whatever your IP address is. Remember, your IP address will be different than mine. This is pulling down an IP from my network. And you press enter. And you look at that. Now I'm over in Workstation. I was on my computer up here. And now I'm over on the Ubuntu Workstation. Excellent. So now that we've done that, we're going to need to go in and look at some configuration options for our um, for our system. And a couple of the things we're going to do here, which I just forgot to mention, is I want to, before I do number five, I want to change Etsy sudoers to allow you to authenticate to root without typing your password every time. So we don't want to type a password every time we go through this kind of thing. So it's just kind of a pain. So how do we do that? Well, over here, if you are in your terminal and you type, this is on the Ubuntu server, sudo s. So says, what's your password? Password. All right, I'm going to do a vi etsy sudoers. Now there is vi sudo, which allows you to edit the file. We're going to not do vi sudo. We're going to use vi slash etsy sudoers to demonstrate how to do this inside of VI. So we're going to walk through this, this process. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to see that we're actually going to encounter a problem while doing this. So we got the sudo. Before that last all, we're going to type I for insert. It says, hey, you're changing a read-only file. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to type I for insert. I'm going to type, oops, <laughs> type P-A-S-S-W-D colon space. Oops, sorry. No P A no P A S S W D colon space. I don't want a password in there, so I'm putting it no pass W D colon space all. By doing that, watch what happens when I do my normal escape colon W Q. Watch what happens here. Oh man, read only option is set. Add exclamation to override. Well, okay, let's give it a shot. WQ exclamation point. There you go. We overrode that. Now we're actually in there. So if we log into the system again, which I'll go ahead and exit and I'll exit and back over to my PC again. And I'm going to SSH back up. Now if I type sudo dash s, it does not prompt me for a password. So now I can get on with my, my work, whatever I'm doing, and I don't have to worry about uh, that password in there. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to change that ENP. Well, what am I talking about, right? If I do this ifconfig, you'll see that I've got this ENP0S3. Oh, oops. ENP0S3. There. <laughs> uh, the ENP0S3, well, those actually are a little bit different depending on what your system is in the computer lab. Some of you may have EN0, some may have ETH0, and some others have ENP0S3. Well, it helps a lot for us to have all of these very consistent. So let's go through and make those consistent. The way we're going to do that is we're going to VI Etsy default grub. So once again, we're using Vim. So we're going to VI Etsy default grub. Press enter there. And if we look down at that grub command, mod, command line Linux, we're going to uh, edit this file. Now, one thing that everybody should keep in mind is the way to uh, pop out of this system without actually damaging it. If you're in VI, remember that escape colon Q exclamation. So if you do make an error, don't forget the escape colon Q exclamation without the W. And that will get you out of this without actually or ac accidentally making a change that you just really didn't want to make. So, um, what changes do we need to make? We're going to go through and we're going to change that line right there, grub 
Command Line Linux, and we're going to add boop, append net dot dot if names equals zero, and that's it. Net dot if names equals zero. So now we've added that in there. We can escape colon wq because we are going to write and quit and press enter. We're not quite done because after we do that, we need to update grub. So we're going to say update grub2 if it's there and press enter. It'll go through and try to update grub, make sure everything's working. If it worked, then what we can do now is we can go through and we can restart the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and choose reboot. It says that that was closed. And if we look at the virtual machine, I'll try to bring that up on the screen here. We can see the virtual machine is restarting. I'll go ahead and put this over here and we're going to be at Etsy. Etsy default grub if names equals zero. And update dash grub to just some notes in there so everybody has um, has the text that they need to go change or what they need to put in. Maybe I should put the whole line in there. Do that. So that you can see that. All right. So if you look over on the uh, the screen there inside the video, we've got the whole command that you need to type. Now it's asking us to log in. I'm, this time I'm not going to log in. I'm actually not going to log in locally on the machine this time. I know the IP address. It should not have changed. I'm going to flip back over to my terminal window. I'm going to try to log in as student. Oh, look at that. It didn't work. Now when I changed my interface, when I changed it that from ENP0S3 and I switched it over to ETH0, there can be some complications that occur. And those complications, well, we'll actually look at what NetPlan is inside the new Ubuntu distro and if we're getting new IP addresses or if it's working. Now, inside of the new NetPlan system, it's going to look for specific interfaces like ENP0S3. So let's log in. Oops, clicked in the wrong window. There we go. Let's log in as student again. And inside of student, we're going to type password. I've got some strange, I don't know if you can see this, but I've got some strange uh, waviness going on on my screen there, which is kind of uh, weird. Um, now I've logged into that. I'm going to do an IF config, and you're going to find that I don't even have an interface showing up. So that interface does not appear at all. Oh, no. So what we're going to do is sudo-s, pop over as root. We're going to vi etsy. If you type the net plan, and you look at that cloud init YAML, that kind of thing. We can look at that, see if that's there. And we look down here and we see this ENP0S3. If you see that word right there, oh, let's use a VI option. Why not? Let's do the colon percent S slash ENP0S3 to ETH0. Like that. There we go. So I just changed it. Of course, you don't have to use the find replace option inside of VI to change that. But I just changed it using the find replace option. It's kind of good practice if you ever want to go and do that. But now I changed that to ETH0 and DHCP4 is true and it's using version 2 on Ethernet. So I'm going to go ahead and escape colon WQ and save that thing. It says, hey, there's one more file to edit. That's probably because I hit some kind of space somewhere. Let me see what I did. Maybe I did it twice. WQ there. Okay, so I've saved that file. I'm going to go back over to I have config. You notice nothing is there. And then I can try to restart uh, NetPlan or I can just restart networking or I can use NetPlan. Um, oh, what is it? NetPlan. NetPlan restart or reset or what is it? Choose for apply. There it is. NetPlan plan apply. We'll try that. And now I'll look at my. Ethernet again, and bing, there it is. Now I'm 192.168.1.20. Now to be sure that happens every, oops, to be sure that happens every time, I'm gonna reboot again. So, bloop. And that's, be, and this is only occurring because the, 
Um, they decided to go with NetPlan in uh, Ubuntu 17 series on. On other systems that are not using NetPlan, you don't have to worry about this. So the, it's just for the, the problems with NetPlan. So if you're using NetPlan, it's annoying and uh, you'll just have to get along with it. So now I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna try to connect back up. Let's see what happens. Bloop. There we go, I'm back up. So now if I go and look at my configuration, we can see that I've got my ETH zero there. We can also see it showed me that the IP address for ETH zero was right there. It's giving me my memory usage, everything else. So that is it. That is remotely configuring a system and that is changing the uh, the interface over. And we have to do a couple of options there. <clears throat> you know, I should mention in the document that we will have to go to Etsy net plan and slash whatever the YAML file is and find that YAML file yaml and change it to eth0 and then you can either reboot or you type net plan apply to get that going so that'll bring you up to speed with those things hope that this helps and i look forward to talking to you when we install apache